Anime is not a genre. It's a world where you can find almost anything of any type depending on what people want to experience. You have fantastical adventure anime which makes us want to become the main characters to have their strength and willpower. You also have more mature stories which want to develop the characters through more complex themes. You even have shows for kids which approach themes from a simpler perspective. And somewhere in between these types lies a genre that has been at the forefront of anime these past few years due to its relatable stories and themes. Stories like Clanad and its afterstory, Kaon, Anohana, Your Lie in April, and more recently, Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai, which makes us connect with these characters, which are who we are. That genre is Slice of Life. And in 2016, there were two films that came out that represented this genre at its best. Your Name, a film I've already analysed on this channel, so go check it out, I kinda almost completely beyondly fell in love with it. But there was also another, one that I've rewatched so many times and constantly gets better, where it focuses on actual real life settings with no fantasy elements, with relatable stories and relatable characters. It's time to finally talk about a silent voice. The film starts off with an 18 year old teenager called Shoya Ishida, who is crossing out days on a ripped calendar and working towards something. After crossing the final day, we see him walking alongside a bridge and licks down to its river. He contemplates the idea of quietly falling off from it and then we see him walking alongside a smaller bridge, one less scary one more appealing to be a part of, as if he was remembering something. And then, with incredible use of sound and editing, from slice of life music to the who's my generation, from long shots to fast paced cuts, from a sad, guilty face to a happy clear conscience one, we see Ishida when he was 12 years old. And this opening sequence then ends with the arrival of a new girl at his class. But she is different. She is incredibly shy, closed off, looking down, and when she is supposed to speak, she doesn't, because she is deaf. And thus, the 12 year old Shoya Ishida is introduced to Shoko Nishimiya. This is where our story starts, more specifically our backstory, but it's not a particularly happy one. Important to note that I will be entering spoiler territory, so if you haven't watched this film, please go do so. It touches upon themes that are incredibly relatable to young teenagers who went through a difficult time in their lives, who felt alone, who wanted to fit in, but for some reason couldn't, whether through psychological or physical differences. You have been warned. This anime film is based on a manga of the same name, which tells the story of a young boy called Ishida who bullies a young girl called Nishimiya due to her being deaf. In other words, being different. And that is what makes this story amazing to witness. The logical route would be to have Nishimiya be our main protagonist and see things through her perspective. But the creator of the manga, Yoshitoki Oima, felt it would be more interesting to see things from the bully's perspective. And I couldn't agree more. And by seeing things through his perspective, we're also not immediately presented to what Nishimi is feeling deep inside. So we start off this backstory by watching how Ishida and some of his classmates bully Nishimiya, and how she is able to maintain a smile every step of the way. And this is constant, with each scene more hurtful than the next, with Nishimiya trying to be friends with our main character, but he ends up brushing her off. This is heartbreaking to watch, but little did Ishida know what was to happen. After all the bullying, the school tries to pinpoint the culprit but only Ishida is labelled as such. He then reacts negatively to this, trying to pin other classmates for this too, but by doing so, he turns all of his classmates against him, losing all of his friends and ultimately becoming alone. One would think that this would make Ishida more sympathetic for Nishimiya, especially when it's clear that she is still trying to help him after all of the awful things he did to her. But no, Ishida still gets angry at Nishimiya and in this climactic moment she finally breaks, jumps on Ishida and mutters the words, I'm doing the best that I can. 
I remember at this point in the film completely hating this character and thinking that there was no way I would end up liking him in any way, shape or form. And five minutes later, I go from hating him to rooting for him. The film skips to the present with Ishida as a teenager again and deciding not to commit suicide. He instead goes to meet Nishimiya at her high school and, with her obviously not wanting to be near him initially, he reveals to be really nice to her and even learns sign language. To which he then asks if she wants to be friends with him, which mirrors the scene when they were kids when she asked him the exact same thing but with no success. This Ishida is not the same as who he once was. This is someone who feels ashamed of his past, who ended up being deeply affected by his actions and losing everything due to that. He lost his confidence and self-belief, blaming himself for everything that happened, becoming more and more isolated. And this scene in the present day clearly depicts this, where everything is blurred around him, where crosses have been placed on everyone's faces, showing he can't keep eye contact. And when he places his hands on his ears, the sound that was in the foreground becomes muffled and goes towards the background. We went from someone who felt like he had control of the whole world, to feeling like the whole world is weighing constantly on his shoulders. He can't communicate with anyone, and the effort in doing it hurts him emotionally. But he tries to keep a smile on his face when he is forced to do so, like Nishimi has done all her life when things could have easily been black and white, good and bad, have now become grey. What's even more brilliant is how this is all portrayed. The anime film was adapted by Kyoto Animation and directed by the talented Naoko Yamada. Known for her work on Kaon, Tamako Market, the acclaimed film Tamako Love Story and even having a big hand in developing animes like Clanad, especially its second season, Clanad After Story. One thing to mention first is the quality of the animation itself. It's absolutely magical to see the warmth in everything she works on. How the yellow-orangey look can create such a deep, profound and melancholic atmosphere, and how she chooses to frame each shot. This is apparent in her work beforehand, and is elevated here in a silent voice. How we see characters expressing with their hands, feet and legs, and we immediately understand what the character is going through, especially Nishimiya. For instance, let's go back and re-watch the moment that Ishida meets Nishimiya in the present time. Nishimiya tries to smile to Ishida because that's what she does, but has tremendous difficulty in doing so. She then exhales, trying to gain the courage to smile again, but again can't seem to do so, resulting in her momentarily running away from the situation, running away from the pain that she went through because of everything that happened. And Ishida was in the midst of it all. Nishimiya, without any words, any dialogue, shows us what she is truly feeling. There's another scene where this is expanded on. The gang take a trip to a theme park and, unexpectedly, Ueno, who was also a part of both Nishimiya's and Ishida's class during their childhood, pulls Nishimiya away. But Nishimiya's sister was smart enough to place her camera on Nishimiya so we could get a glimpse of the conversation itself. And all we see are Nishimiya's hands and Ueno's arms and legs. How their physical actions lets us know what they are feeling. And the climatic moment of this is when Nishimiya says she doesn't hate Ueno or anyone else, but rather herself, and how the twitching of her fingers are focused when this happens. This is how you tell a story, by showing it to us. How one can seem despicable, but actually has layers of sorrow and distraught, and maybe even feelings of love for someone specific. How one can seem to be nice, but actually just wants to fit in, to be a part of everything, but also be herself. How one just wants to get along and be happy, but is actually running away from who she once was, or maybe even still is. How one is actually a good friend for Ishida, but is also scared of ending up alone. How Yuzuru, Nishimiya's sister, tries to help her in every way possible, trying to make Nishimiya feel part of the world, but also feels disconnected with the world itself. How everyone is multi-layered in so many ways. How we are all different, but actually all the same. And what's worse is seeing how everyone deals with this, especially Nishimiya. Smiling as if everything was alright. Smiling to show how happy she is. Smiling to get through it all but smiling simply isn't enough. 
which results in this unexpected scene, where Ishida finds Nishimiya about to jump off a balcony. He calls for Nishimiya's name, trying to get her to turn, to not jump off, even calling her by her first name, and then runs towards her. And, in a split second, we see him managing to grab hold of her in the nick of time. For now, everything seems to be fine, with Ishida helping Nishimiya get back on the balcony. But, as Ishida tries to help her up, instead of Nishimiya falling, it's Ishida that ends up falling into the river below. And again, thanks to Naoko Yamada's brilliance, instead of showing this to us, she hides this scene with his mum breaking an egg into a bowl. This is a technique that Naoko Yamada resorts to from time to time, by hiding what is actually happening. However, here she takes a step further. The egg ends up representing Ishida, brought into existence by his mother, and how this contrasts with Ishida possibly losing his life in this moment. But instead of dying, Ishida ends up being in a coma, which then forces everyone to confront each other. When we once saw Ishida's mom apologizing to Nishimi's mother, now we see the exact opposite. When we once saw Ueno being passive-aggressive with Nishimiya, now she goes all out, watching Nishimiya's mother again trying to defend her daughter against everyone, watching Ishida's mom stopping the fight and going towards Nishimiya. And, after all the smiles, all the forced happiness, Nishimiya finally lets it all out and cries her eyes out to Ishida's mom, yelling the words, I'm sorry. And this isn't just for Ishida, she feels sorry for everything, for not being able to communicate with anyone, for seeing things get worse all because she was seemingly different from everyone else. How it all culminated here. And there is one page from the manga that shows this perfectly, where we see her at the top, young and smiling, wanting to be happy, and then at the bottom, with time passing by, with more hurt in her life, she shows the exact opposite. She feels alone. The smiles are not real. Happiness isn't real. She is suffering constantly. This one page demonstrates exactly who Nishimiya is and what she went through in her life. And it's at this moment that we finally fully understand that our main characters, both Nishimiya and Ishida, despite their differences, they're actually surprisingly similar. Both blame themselves for everything, both lacking confidence in themselves, both having difficulties in communicating with other people, and both wanting to correct all that has happened. And it's through Ishida's character that we are able to understand Nishimiya even more. Because she has had to deal with this all her life, since she was born. It's this connection that brings them close again, having Ishida waking up from his coma and reuniting with Nishimiya emotionally. How it is important to help each other and themselves live through all the pain, the hurt and finally forgiving themselves. One to forgive himself for his actions when he was younger, the other to forgive herself for thinking that she was ever to blame for being who she is. Forgiveness. But it's not just them that do this, it's everyone else too. Then, when everyone starts to get along with each other again, when things become easier, when life doesn't seem so hard, we arrive at the final scene of the film, where Ishida stands in the middle of a festival and looks around, with all the crosses falling down to the ground and Ishida is finally able to see everyone, seeing their faces, seeing the possibility of communicating with other people. And after everything that happens, Ishida, in a burst of emotions, cries his eyes out. He finally arrived at the point of redemption and looking forward to what the future can bring, to what people can bring to him, but mostly to what he can bring to them. And thus, the silence in a silent voice has now become less silent. Even though the ending is different from the manga, there is no question that this story is fascinating, and both the manga and the film in their own ways, do this incredibly well. They make us feel connected with these characters because we have felt this in one way or another in our lives, and brings us closer to people like Nishimiya, who have always had that lack of communication. We all want to be a part of something, of anything, but the world we live in makes us feel awful for being who we are, for being unique, for being ourselves, and we end up resenting ourselves for it, possibly even hating who we are. But as time goes on, we learn to communicate with each other, 
and through that communication we understand that we can be quite similar, making it easier to not feel so alone, to not be so silent, to eventually shape our voice so we can be heard, to speak and have somebody, anybody, just listen. Anime is not a genre. Anime can be so many things, including real life.